What up, Lebron here. Welcome to episode three of Business Monday. Today, we're going to talk about independently publishing your book. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Business Monday. I'm really excited about today. This is a topic that's been asked, uh, requested by at least three or four people. Um, uh, they, they asked me to talk about the process of independently publishing my own books, how I did it, uh, maybe some of my experiences with it. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is talk to you a bit about my story and how I even got to do this. I already did that several times in the past, so I'm going to make this part very brief. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the challenge of going through that process. I'm going to talk about, I have some talking points here, um, and the research of the market, which is really important, and the, the different publishing avenues. So let's start with my story. Um, when I popped into the, the, the work, uh, work life, you know, when I finished with all of the routine things that people are going through, the school, and here it's the army, the military service, um, I decided that I want to create um, that I just want to make money, you know, I wanted to start working and doing something and I knew I had it in me to, to build something of my own. I didn't know exactly what it was, I already had this um, very old blog at the time that I posted regularly uh, drawing tutorials and things like this, but just with pictures. Uh, and then I started doing YouTube um, simultaneously, but then I knew that I wanted to um, build a stream of income based on my talent, my abilities, because I love it. I love teaching and I love explaining things. This is something I got to experiment a lot uh, in the few years prior to, uh, to starting to work on this. So I decided to write a book. I was at the same time following this guy called Steve Pavlina. He has an amazing blog uh, and he talked about uh, digital products and books and how books are really strong uh, right now on Amazon. So then I started creating books and they started to sell and it really worked well for me. And I think there are a few reasons it worked well. First of all, I was really quick. Um, I wasn't wasting time, you know, I, I, the first book I wrote and finished within two months um, and I published a lot of books. That's another thing that I think helped it work for me. And another thing was um, I did the proper research and this is something I'm going to touch upon in a few moments, um, but I really did the, the, a good research. And so what happened, what ended up happening was I was building a portfolio of books that actually sell and I published them 100% me. Um, I didn't have any outside help at all. I wasn't spending money on almost anything, not even formatting in the, the actual technical process of turning it into a book. Um, do I have something in my teeth? No. Um, so, so I wasn't spending anything on, on that. I was designing my own covers because luckily enough, I had the, the graphic design experience and the art experience. So I didn't need any outside help. I really um, bootstrapped the whole thing because I didn't have money to spend, you know, tons of money to spend. I just wanted to create it. Um, and I like to be very practical about what I do and to start earning from the beginning and not to take outside help or something. I don't know. I just don't like these things. Um, so. I don't like, I guess, to be in debt for anything, uh, you know, even for f friends. Um, so anyway, what happened was after a while, I started realizing that I did everything by myself and I have full power to take this to the next level. What I th think is the, the next level, which is going with maybe a traditional publishing house selling the rights to some uh, of the languages. Um, I didn't want to give up the English language rights. So even if a publishing house would uh, tomorrow email me and make an offer, uh, it means I have to give up the, the current uh, book that's on Amazon and probably because I'm selling the English rights it would have to be a really, really, really good offer to make me do that um, because my books do sell on my own and I don't have to share my profits with anyone. Uh, but in any case, I knew that the other languages are a waste in a way because I have the Spanish language, tons of people speak Spanish um, and I could just sell the rights and make another stream of income like that. Um, I could sell the German rights, the French rights, uh, just going over the Russian, you know, uh, Chinese, uh, uh, Arabic, you know, all of the languages that are really um, spoken by many people. So I just started going for it and I cold emailed a lot of publishing houses. I did my own research. I got the emails of all the relevant contacts. Um, I tried making my emails relevant to the publishing house's context. So if I know that the publishing house is exactly what I'm doing, I, I told them that I feel like it's, it's going to be a really good match. If I felt like it was kind of, you know, almost the same, but maybe a little different, 
I would say I noticed that you don't usually publish this specific type of books, but maybe you would be interested. And what had ended up happening, and I talked about it a few times, is that uh, Ediciones Urano, which is one publishing house uh, based in uh, Barcelona, uh, they decided to go with me and, and publish the book in Spanish, which was an amazing achievement for me, um, I think. And I didn't even care about, you know, I talked about a revenue, uh, a stream of income. I wasn't even... It was a side thing for me. The main thing was distribution, getting my name out there. That was the thing that really attracted me to doing this. Um, and having, you know, your book published by a, a real publishing house is prestigious in a way, you know. Um, and I already receive on a regular basis pictures uh, that people, like followers from here and Instagram, just and even via email, a lot of people send me pictures of the book in the bookstore uh, telling me, I'm, so I'm working in Buenos Aires or whatever, and I see the book and they just take a picture and it's amazing. Um, so as a side note, if you're Spanish speaking, if it's your first language, if you prefer that, you can probably get it. I know that it's uh, available in Argentina in some stores. Uh, I'm not really sure about the distribution because as an author that's under a publishing house, you don't get a lot of information, like the amount of information you get is surprisingly low. Um, with my other books, I know exactly where they are. Uh, so in any case, this is my story and, and uh, I, I recently got the first sales report and I have to say, I am pleased. Um, there were quite a few sales, I think, compared to a very niche topic um, um, that I think um, relative to a niche topic. So yeah, because drawing, you know, <clears throat> if you take all of the spectrum of different areas of life, you know, drawing is very specific. There are books like, you know, business and self-development that may be also very niche, but then there's books on health and fitness. And I guess these are wider topics. And if you want to go wider than that, that would be uh, fiction, you know, novels and Harry Potter, for example, huge audience because it is a story and people connect with stories but drawing is a very niche topic uh, and I think this is a part of why it succeeded because the, usually the success comes in niches it's very hard to take over a huge market um, so even if you go into the health and fitness industry it's gonna be really hard if, if and just talking about business in general if you're gonna go into the, the beverage industry that's the worst you're competing against all the largest brands it's so hard getting distribution. Uh, they have crazy deals with all this, the, the different supermarkets. It's so hard. Um, your, cha your best bet is to sell your beverage to a company. Even better than doing it yourself. It's just borderline impossible. You have to be like a legendary businessman, I think. Um, so this is a very specific niche. And this is why I think it worked for me. So that's the first tip for you if you want to do what I did. Um, so I think this kind of wraps up my story. Let's move on to the next part, which is I want to say the process is very challenging. It has so many different aspects and faces and sides to it. You need to be able to write, uh, which I assume you do if you want to publish a book. Um, you need to have some kind of a, a topic in which you're knowledgeable. So if you're good at something, you really need to know what you're talking about. You know, I don't feel comfortable to teach something that I don't know. Uh, and it really connects with the podcast episode I recorded on how I know I can teach, how I know, how can I know I'm ready to teach. And I just listen to the market. You know, when I start see when I started seeing um, comments popping on my YouTube channel of, can you teach this about watercolor? Can you do that? I just go with the flow. And this is what I teach. If people ask it, I will give it to them. Um, and I do have three, two and a half, two courses on Udemy, third one uh, in production now. So uh, I, I wouldn't have done it a year ago because people were, weren't asking for it. But now I feel like I'm knowledgeable enough to do it. And I don't judge myself beyond that point. If people ask for it, I take it that there's a market need. I, I'm not gonna be romantic about the idea of, am I good enough? I see other people that are better. I'm doing watercolor painting for like two years, you know, there's people out there doing it for 40 years. So yes, maybe their one hour course is more valuable than my three hours course, maybe, uh, but I do see a need, so I'm gonna provide that. Um, and besides, I think there's a place for style and there's a place for approach. Maybe some enjoy learning more from me than from someone else. And maybe some enjoy learning from someone else more than me, you know, may the best person win. That's what I believe in. Um, but in any case, you know, and, and it's funny, it's, it connects with competition. I don't really think there is competition. On the other hand, I think if you're good at what you're doing, you're going to attract your own people. Um, but in any case, what I wanted to say is this. I'm going to go back to the... To, I went on a huge side tangent. Um, this is a really hard process. You need to be able to write. You need to be able to know 
the, your to have an area of expertise in the first place. Um, you need to be able to do things yourself or know how to get them and pay for them. So if you can't design your own book cover, you're gonna have to pay someone else. If you can design your book cover but you don't know how to make the dimensions correctly, you're gonna have to pay someone else to do it. If you don't know how to format your book, I'm really an autodidact, didactic. I learn things by myself, so I just read and I internalize and then I do. So I learned how to do the formatting on my own. Uh, the marketing I learned how to do on my own and looking back, you know, I could have done a lot of things much better and I will correct them with this coming book that I'm working on, on sketching people. Um, so yeah, so there's just a lot of work that goes into it um, and it's just a lot of effort. Uh, the work just begins after you finish the book, you know, and most people start and don't finish. So if you're in the small group that finishes the book and actually publishes it, then you start working for real because you have the marketing. You have to be able to put it out there. Now, I will say this, okay, and this, this is, we're done with the challenge, okay. I hope the, the, you got it clearly. It's really hard. It's a hard process. Next up, research. Research is everything. All of my books that sold... Looking back, I did a good market research and I actually discovered a need. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna share with you my process. If I wanna do a book on sketching people, I'm gonna go over to Amazon and look at all the books that are on that topic or even tangentially, if that's a word, related to that topic. Okay, so I'm gonna look at figure drawing and I'm gonna look at uh, drawing people from real life and I'm gonna look at caricature drawing and drawing uh, how to draw people for kids and I'm gonna go over all of the reviews and I'm gonna look at the good and I'm gonna try and preserve the good and then look at the bad and try to correct the bad. My goal with publishing any product, any product at all, is to fill in a market need. If you don't fill in a market need, you don't have a product. Um, and if you're filling a, a fulfilling a market need that has tons of other people fulfilling it, you're just gonna have a very hard competition. So the way I see it, as long as you really have something unique of your own, uh, it's really, it's gonna probably work as long as you put it in front of the right people. So for me, you can say that the market need I fulfill in many, I think, um, in many ways is not necessarily the skill I have, but maybe my teaching style, uh, because Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just admit it. There's a lot of people that are far better than me in sketching and drawing and painting and everything. But my teaching style is unique. I think it's very accessible to many people. It immediately clicks. Um, the connection is there for many people. And I also think I actually have this ability of simplifying complex concepts, making them more digestible, making them easier to understand, just like this video hopefully is. Um, so I think I'm able to break down really, for example, the visual intelligence part of things. I think I can really um, tell what's going on through my mind when I do it. And I think this is why it's successful. I think this is why I constantly get really good feedback on my courses. Um, the courses just seem to be doing what they should be doing, which is, and you saw this in yesterday's video, I, I sketched with my left hand. Even if your lines are inaccurate, as long as you don't need the motor skills, you need the visual perception. If you see something and you are able to understand it, you will be able to put it to paper and the motor skills will, will come with practice. This is why we have sketching exercises. This is why I cover both fronts in the course, both the motoric and the, you know, the actual skill of drawing. I do many exercises of cross hatching and the suns and rays that I shared here for free. Um, all of these things really help develop the motor skills, but then the visual side of things. So I think this is something I'm really good at personally, even more than many other way more experienced artists. And it could be because I think I really have a natural gift for it, um, that I am able to explain it in such a high level, in, in such a high level of detail. Um, so, and, and if you're interested in that, check out the course. It's in the description box. I added finally uh, a payment method. You can pay with credit card as well. Uh, you don't need the PayPal crap anymore. Um, and there's the additional how to shade book the, uh, course that I just published and these two work really well together. So if you want that and if you, if you want to get a taste of why I think uh, I'm good at teaching these same things, check out the course. It's going to be in the description box, I think the first thing. So in any case, the research is everything. You want to be able to fulfill a market need. Okay, that's the, the main thing. And how to do research? 
go to Google and check out how to do a niche or a market research. You have to, to I, I won't even pretend to know um, that I to pretend to know that, uh, how to explain it. It's really complex and it's, for every person it's different. But you, what I did is go to Amazon uh, and actually start typing how to sketch or how to draw or people drawing or things like this and see what it auto completes to. And then what I would do is find a result that it doesn't auto that it auto completes to, but there is no relevant results. And then I would go for that. And then I would analyze the existing books and I'll try to figure out if there's a need that's not fulfilled. For example, with the how to sketch people book that's going to be out really, really soon. There is a need. Um, most of the books on drawing people fall under two categories. One category is the highly realistic, you know, the old master's style of really drawing from life. And I think ideally, that's the best you can strive for. Okay, so you've got that one on the one hand, and on the other hand, you have the how to draw for kids. You have something in the middle, well, not really in the middle, but you have the gesture drawing and all of that, which is super important. But when I talk about like how to draw people, you have this and that. You don't have anything in the middle that's like, here's a fun approach of doing this. Here's a fun way that will also lead to accurate results. Let's not be so serious and talk about sketching and drawing in graphite. Let's make it fun. Let's use whatever medium you want. Use a ball pen if you want to. I'm going to show you how to be accurate as well. So this is the market need that I discovered and I want to fulfill. And the book is going to be out really soon. It's just, it takes so much time because I'm working on all the other things I'm working on. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a really good one. I think a real gem and hopefully it will sell well as well. I did my research, but you never know. You just launch it and hope for the best. So in any case, this is it in terms of the research of the market. The next point and the final point is research the different publishing avenues. I already told you Smashwords is crap in my opinion. I made $9 last month on Smashwords. <laughs> it's embarrassing. And on Amazon, it's like, I can't even compare because it just works. The books are good. The books are marketed well. I build a following here. It leads people there. You know, you have to do everything. You can't escape it. You have to do marketing here on YouTube and on Instagram and on email and on Facebook and everywhere if you really want to sell. So in any case, research the different publishing avenues. For me, Smashwords doesn't work. Um, things like Amazon work really well. CreateSpace, the, the, the um, uh, paperback version of Amazon, it's like a service. They bought this company paperback and they do print on demand. So you just create a PDF version of the book. Five people order it. They print five copies. The the printing cost is very high because for just like five copies, it's it, it's not worth it. Usually they, you know, they print in thousands or five hundreds uh, batches. And uh, so it makes some of the expenses a little higher, but I still make money off of it. And it's like you can actually buy my book physically anywhere in the world almost. So that's insane. Um, so this works really well for me. Uh, in the beginning, I had more digital sales than paperback, but then with time, the paperback actually started going over the digital sales because I guess it's a how to draw book. People want to hold it in their hands. So in any case, I think it's really important to research the different publishing avenues, whether it's online or offline. Uh, I think for a lot of people, it's worth considering going to a publishing house and it's not as impossible as people think. You know, um, if you have connections, it's really easy. If you know someone on the inside, it's really the best case scenario, but you don't have to. You can actually just email them and let them know, here, I have this book, I finished writing it, have a finished product as much as possible to the extent possible. If you have a work in progress that's like 80% final, that's great. Uh, here's the book. For me, I took it to the next step. I sent them a physical copy of the book. Here's the book in English. It already sells to the Spanish, you know, publishing houses and everyone. It already sells. I think it could do really well in your market. I really want to reach a larger audience. Here it is. Take a look at it. Uh, but if you have like a manuscript or something that's half, maybe 80% finished or 70% finished or even 60% finished, if you think you can sell the idea, go for it. You don't have to go uh, traditional like me and do all of the hard work. You can just go to a publishing house and a lot of people get published, you know, maybe go to a smaller one if the big ones won't say yes. I think if you're good enough and if you're, um, um, what's the word for that? I hate when I miss words. Um, if you're not consistent, but persistent, if you're persistent enough, you will be able to, to sell it to the publishing house, okay? Uh, and it may be good for you, a more hands-off approach. They do everything, you earn less, you earn 10% of the, of the um, list price or something like that, but you don't have to do anything. They design the cover, they do everything, they may even distribute it to other places, which is also something you need to research. The reseller of the rights, I think it's really important because you may want to keep those to yourself and they may... Um, 
try and force you to give it up if you want to close a deal with them. You really need to check that out. Learn, educate yourself. If you have an area of expertise that you really think could help people, uh, and if you have enough willpower, and maybe even you wrote something already, go for it. It's it's amazing to me how many people just don't do it because they believe it's impossible and that belief is just false it's a completely wrong limiting belief and i think this is what helped me so far i don't have these limiting beliefs for me there's no ceiling as an artist i can make as much money as possibly as possible you know i don't see any glass floors or anything uh, glass ceilings <laughs> glass ceilings or anything like that uh, to me, I think that the potential is infinite. I do think you have to be smart, you have to work really hard, uh, and it's a combination of these two things. You have to know exactly what your skills are. Uh, but if you have all of these and you really believe you can do it, just go for it, really. If you have something written, and just try and get it published. If, if, it's, if you believe it's good enough, just go for it. You, worst case, you'll get a no, but you'll know you tried. You know, all of the things that I regret are things I never tried. If I did try something and I failed, I never regret it. I literally can't remember one thing that I regret right now off the top of my head that I did, you know? Um, so in any case, this is it. I think this is a good place to stop this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. As always, let me know in the comment below what other topics you want me to cover. This is Oxygen to me. This is a new series. I don't know what you want me to talk about unless you let me know. Okay, I do have a few ideas uh, from, previous, from the previous episode and from other things that I wrote down for myself that I think are going to be really good. Uh, I started really selling my new course, as I mentioned, uh, using Facebook ads as well, and it works really well. I think I will share the results soon. Um, but aside from that, um, if you have any topic that, rela that relates to making money from your art skill or from your art itself, leave a comment below, let me know what you think, and we'll try to direct this show in any direction that, that works, okay? Now, if you know someone that this video will help, I would really be thankful if you share it. And the reason why I ask, and I never ask for uh, video shares, is that this is a new topic and I want to attract more of the audience of maybe people like me who are hungry and want to succeed um, in that specific creative skill kind of area because this is very general notice with the business Monday I'm going through uh, very general topics that could relate to uh, whether you do music or, or you know any kind of artistic endeavor or any kind of business at all I think a lot of people can benefit from this but mainly the converging point of art and business if you know anyone that this video would help be, uh, be sure to, to, to like share it with them or send them, especially if they want to uh, publish their own book. I think this is really useful to watch. Um, and this is it, really. I want to thank you for all of your support. Uh, it's been incredibly helpful in, in giving me the willpower and the, and the strength to continue and publishing a lot in, in publishing a lot of videos. Uh, don't forget to check out my beginner's drawing course in the description box below. This is the main thing that I, I build you know, my income on. So if you're in that audience and you want to learn that, be sure to check it out. And I, again, want to thank you so much and I will see you again in another vid tomorrow.